Now, I would like to introduce our 2020 keynote speaker, Damien Trujillo. Since 1996, Damien Trujillo has been an NBC Bay Area news reporter, host, and producer of Comunidad del Valle, the longest running public affairs program in the Bay Area. Comunidad del Valle now airs in Spanish on Telemundo 48. Damien is an Emmy Award winner and has also been honored by the Associated Press, the Radio and Television News Directors Association, and the National Association of Hispanic Journalists. Damien grew up in Greenfield, about two hours south of San Francisco on Highway 101. While in high school, Damien worked in the agricultural fields of the Salinas Valley with his family to help make ends meet. Damien reveres and honors farm workers for their tireless work, awarding a scholarship each year to the child of farm workers in his hometown of Greenfield. In 2012, American University professor Carolyn Brown produced a half-hour documentary on the life of Damien Trujillo titled, From the Fields, An American Journey. We are privileged to welcome a local icon and a proud San Jose State Spartan, Mr. Damien Trujillo. Hello, graduates, and congratulations. Thank you for having me as your keynote speaker for your commencement exercises uh, online. Boy, everyone will remember the class of 2020 for what y'all have been through. The resilience uh, is really exemplary. So uh, congratulations uh, for what you've done, uh, staying strong uh, throughout this uh, pandemic. Uh, welcome to my makeshift studio. This is where I'm working from home sometimes. Other times uh, I'm out on the front lines as well, covering the news of the day. Uh, you know, when you first came back from summer vacation, either in middle school or in elementary school, the teacher would go around and asking people, tell me what you did during your summer vacation, kind of to break the ice. Uh, and so Jimmy would raise his hand and he would say, I went to Disneyland. And maybe Mary Lou would raise her hand and she would say, I went to Yosemite. And then someone else would say, oh, I went to Great America for my summer vacation. Uh, and when it would get to me, I would lie. I would say that I too went to Disneyland, that I too went to Great America and to Yosemite. I lied because I was embarrassed to say that I was a farm worker. I was embarrassed to say that during the summer my hands were full of mud uh, and my eyelids were full of dust uh, and I worked six days a week uh, in, in perhaps one of the, the least appreciated jobs uh, in this country. I was embarrassed uh, to say that. Um, I remember that it started back in, in the summer of my seventh grade year and um, it was five in the morning and the light went on in my bedroom and it was my dad and my dad said, Mijo, you're coming with me to work today. Uh, and my dad was a farm worker and I didn't like the idea because I knew what farm work entailed. But I thought I paid my dues on that one day that I went with my dad. Uh, but then the next morning the light went on in my room uh, and it was my dad. And he said, Mijo, you're coming with me to work today. And so for seven summers, seven summer vacations, uh, I spent my time uh, toiling in the fields of the Salinas Valley and I hated it. I hated farm work uh, because it was tiring. You were there in 100 degree temperatures in the Salinas Valley. You worked from sunup uh, to sundown and uh, again, the least appreciated job um, in this country. But looking back, I, I think farm work is the best job I ever had because it really humbles you and it teaches you to really appreciate the things in life that maybe you would otherwise uh, take for granted. I always say that um, uh, I, I was once a farm worker and I, I will always be a farm worker. Uh, when I got uh, into college, I started into broadcasting. I did college radio. And in college radio, you do an air check, which is basically a recording of the work that you've done. Uh, and that's so that people, DJs can go back and listen to see what they did right and wrong, maybe fix things for the next show. Well, when I listened to my first air check, I didn't realize before then that I had an accent. Uh, I thought that I was a regular American kid, K through 12, born in the United States, but that's when I realized that I had an accent. And so that made me also realize that in broadcast, you have to learn how to enunciate better and slow your pace a little more because uh, if you speak with a thick accent and then your, your message is going to be lost in translation. And I don't know if I still have an accent. I don't know if I've lost it. I didn't try to lose it either way. 
uh, but I knew that I did have to adjust the way I spoke publicly and into a microphone because uh, otherwise people might not understand what it was uh, that I was saying. And so that was one of the challenges, but there were many other challenges uh, before college, during college, and as a professional. Um, I remember that I graduated from college and I didn't, I couldn't get a job anywhere. Uh, and that was rejection after rejection, six months, paying rent with credit cards. Uh, and I, it reminded me of this song by a Mexican singer named Vicente Fernandez. Uh, the song is titled, No Me Se Rajar. It means I don't know how to quit. Uh, and it's a love song, but it's a title that, that really grabbed me, uh, th this idea that you don't learn how to quit. And so I taped that title uh, on a piece of paper. I taped that to my bedroom door, and it basically said, No me se rajar. I will become a journalist. Uh, and I use that concept to this day when things uh, seem a little more difficult uh, than they need to be. Then you think of those that phrase, I don't know how to quit, No me se rajar. I'm going to plow through this. Um, so I've used that throughout my career, throughout my life, actually. Um, now, about you guys, uh, you are the next generation, the ones who will pioneer us uh, into the next technological boom, the ones who will come up with better ways to handle future pandemics. Uh, because one thing this pandemic has done is it allowed us to reconnect with each other and in some cases return to the basics. In other cases, it allowed us to advance the cause by finding and expanding technological ways to communicate. You are the ones who will keep this country the greatest country in the world because our diversity is what makes us strong, our racial and our gender diversity. It is why I pronounce my last name Trujillo and not Trujillo on the air. And it's not to be radical, it's not to send a message it's about being true to who I am. It's about being proud of that Mexican blood that runs inside of me and equally proud of being an American. Now, whether your ancestry is traced back to India or Vietnam, Italy, or the United Kingdom, embrace that ancestry as much as you embrace this country that we all call home. Now, I'm headed toward the dusk years of my career, in fact, the dusk years uh, of my life. I've done my best to leave, hopefully, a small asterisk in the history of this great nation. And when I do pass on, my headstone will contain the year I was born, followed by a dash, followed by the year I die. But it's what I did with that dash that will mean the most. How did I live my years? Could I have done more? with my dash. Can others learn from the mistakes I made along the way? And there were several. Graduates, you are living your dash right now. Make it a meaningful dash. And remember, never learn how to quit. Congratulations.